You know, you look back in the 1970s and 80s, and a lot of conversations turned to not only who was the most overrated, but in this case of this gentleman, one of the most underrated skaters in the NHL. Now, uh, this guy was treasured by the NHL and the WHA. He eventually uh, chose the NHL after uh, uh, being lounging in the, in the uh, CHL for a couple of seasons, not even his potential, but as soon as he hit the NHL, he had some very, very, uh, you know, uh, great seasons. Uh, consecutively were not for injuries. He could have easily scored 30 goals a season, but, uh, you know, twinges and tears here and there were, were causing him problems. So today we're going to be talking about uh, a, a great player who unfortunately passed away in us at age only 64 in Chatham, Ontario in 2018. Now, Kenneth Lyle Lewson, or Ken to his fan, fans and friends, played nine seasons in the NHL between 1975 and 1984. Now, he was originally drafted by the Atlanta Flames in the 1973 NHL draft, but it was also taken 58 overall in 1973 by the Edmonton, Alberta Oilers. Now, uh... He's part of some interesting machinations in his career, trades that worked out, trades that didn't work out, and he was part of that uh, rising uh, Calgary franchise that started to challenge uh, Gretzky and the Oilers and our check and the Jets every season. Now again, sixth overall, 85th by the Flames, first became the major prominence in junior B hockey. He played with uh, the Chatham, on Ontario Junior B side, uh, born in Dresden. Over two seasons, uh, pretty okay numbers. Second season was his best, 55 points in 52 games. He was an OHA Junior B SOJHL All Star first team in '73, and he won the Ontario Tier Two title with Chatham in that season. So this where it became uh, the major prominence. He said he was 6'2", 200, but ladies and gentlemen, he was a rugged guy. Uh, he played like he was 6'4", 250. Wasn't scared to fight, wasn't scared to go in the corners. Uh, not, uh, not like what he called a goon. He's the closest you're going to get to Clark Gillies of that era. Uh, you know, a uh, personable guy, but never wake him up. Now, his first game with Atlanta was on uh, November 9th, 1975. Now, uh, he played... Uh, uh, mostly uh, defense in Junior B, but moved the right wing for his rookie year. Now, he first made a name himself as one of the biggest victories over Dave Schultz of the, the, the what he called the Goon era, yeah, when he took him on as a rookie and injured Schultz's job, forcing him out of a game. And boys, he, he drew a lot of interest amongst, especially the French media, because a lot of people saw him play for the Voyageurs when, uh, when Atlanta and Montreal were sharing the franchise. Now. Uh, he's part of history in many ways. He scored a thousandth goal in Atlanta Calgary history, franchise history, on December 3rd, 76, versus Boston. He was also suspended one game for leaving the bench during a brawl between Atlanta and Toronto in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs on April 10, 79. And I saw that game, and when Houston uh, jumped, People got scared because he was looking. He was looking to defend, uh, and uh, you know his big hand would come down every once in a while. Uh, like I said, he knew him from the Schultz fight. Now, when Atlanta shifted to Calgary, he fouled him too. But unfortunately, 81 season uh, and the 82 season, he was having chronic problems with hepatitis. Now I'm not sure if it was a blood transfusion or what was going on, but it really took the, the strength out of him. Now. Ironically, he changed his game towards the end of his career. He was Washington's Masterson Trophy nominee in 82-83. So uh, he was showing more what he called off-ice and gentlemanly conduct as the months were going on. Now, the tra he, uh, he was part of a few uh, major, uh, major trades. Uh, uh, Calgary traded him at Pat Reagan to Washington in exchange for Howard Walker, George White, an 82 six-round pick, would end up being marked to uh, Kilstron, a 1993 third-round pick, which was Perry Burzan, and an 84 second-round pick, which actually turned out to be Paul Ranheim on June 9, 92. At the time of the deal, the draft choice was listed as future draft considerations. Now, 
He, ironically, he's a, he's a groundbreaker in more ways than one. When Dresden started their uh, uh, Sports Hall of Fame, he was their inaugural member. Uh, he also played 27 games for the Nova Scotia team that won the AHL regular season and playoff titles, but was not, was not with the squad during the postseason. Now, uh, he went back to OHA Junior B coaching with Dresden, where he was an assistant coach for from 2001 to 2002. Now, a big harness racing fan, he owned uh, two Pacers during his uh, playing days. Now, uh, he was also uh, the Chatham uh, the Chatham Junior Maroons, as they were called, uh, were kind of an amalgam. Some of the best non uh, major junior prospects that were available in Ontario. So te technically, it was a Junior B All Star team, and that's where he drew, uh, drew most the recognition. Now. The hockey arena in Dresden uh, is called the Ken Hewson Memorial Agricultural Center, is named in his honor, but we're hearing sad rumors uh, in the mid-2010s uh, that he was not well, and unfortunately uh, he succumbed to uh, cancer on March 10th, 2018. Now, what I think really, really uh, shortened his career, besides the you know the, the hepatitis and being traded, he loved playing in Calgary, I know that. Now, the, the deal uh, with the Capitals uh, was quite bizarre because him and Brian Ingram were traded to the Kings in a trade that sent Larry Murphy, of all people, to the Capitals. So that was a major trade uh, for the Capitals as well and improved their team uh, like crazy. So let's go over the quick uh, numbers. He played two years in Omaha of the CHL, Atlanta Farm team, 71 points in 150 to 49 games. First a rookie season had 11 points in 38 games. Then, then, he, then he broke out, ladies and gentlemen. 77, to, uh, 78, 79, 80, 20, 22, 21, 23 goals. Then the injuries, of course, in 81, and the hepatitis, 15 goals. Then scored 22 and 25. So uh, technically, if he wasn't the hepatitis, he would have had uh, eight, uh, seven straight seasons with at least 20 goals. And like I said, he was a playmaker, but for me, in my personal opinion, his big breakthrough was 1981, where he had uh, 15 big points in 16 playoff games. And uh, those seven goals, every goal he scored in the playoffs this year was huge, ladies and gentlemen. And like I said, he helped build that Calgary Flames legacy because of the marquee players when he moved to Calgary. Obviously, Houston was, uh, was that. Loved by the fans, loved by the alumni. And it just, unfortunately, like, if you want to say it, obviously, 86, 86 who would have known that uh, Calgary would get to the Stanley Cup final past Edmonton? because, uh, you know, uh, Calgary and Edmonton were starting to be going at the time. But Calgary was a late bloomer. Uh, my only sadness as well, when I saw him win in 89, I thought of Houston right away because he w he was a killer in the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen, a tremendous skater in the playoffs. So final NHL totals, 161 goals, 328 points in 570 games. And this is where he stands out for me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 19 points in 35 uh, playoff games and again uh, that 15 points in the playoffs boys in 81 really really stood out you know ladies and gentlemen if you have a chance go on YouTube and see the uh, results or some of the tape from the preliminary rounds of the 1981 82 and 83 playoffs a lot of things going on the others were dominant but the uh, the, the multiple uh, what do you call uh, Rivalries were going on, especially in the uh, in the Canadian uh, what do you call it? the unofficial Canadian division, Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Calgary. It's uh, it was pretty freaky. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. My only tip for this weekend, by the way, don't bet bet on Vegas because I pre you probably heard that it's a it's a hundred percent certainty that Vegas is going to beat Montreal. Uh, never bet against the Habs, especially when a Stanley Cup is on the line. Have a good day. Bye.